Hello, my name is Bob Chambles, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to embed an audio or a video file into a PDF. This assumes that you already have a PDF created that you want to work with, as well as the uh, audio files that you require. Uh, right now, if you look at my desktop, I have gone ahead and um, filled it with superheroes, but I've also created a PDF file. It's a very simple one uh, that simply specifies who my favorite music star is. And of course, this would be a natural choice. I think that you would agree. Um, so this is my PDF file. It's very simple. I made it in Illustrator. It's just a picture of Weird Al. It says Weird Al is the greatest across the top. And what I want to have happen is that when a user opens this PDF, I want them to be able to put their mouse over the picture of Weird Al and for it to play a portion of one of his songs. In this case, the song Tacky. Now, I'm under the assumption that you already have a sound file picked out and saved onto your computer. If for some reason that sound file is not in WAV format, that's W-A-V, also known as waveform audio, you're going to have to convert it. And I have another video that teaches you how to use Adobe Media Encoder to go ahead and convert whatever format you want into a WAV format. But down here on my desktop, you see that I do have a tacky.wav file, and I'm going to go ahead and embed that into Weird Al. Now looking at my PDF, to create a button, I don't really see anything on the PDF uh, tools menu here that tells me how to do that. What I'm doing is something called Rich Media. And down here on the bottom right, you see a button for Rich Media. This is the Rich Media tool where I get to add audio, video, and interactive objects, as the pop-up said. But if for some reason you don't see this, you can just go up to Help, and you can type in Media, hover over Tools, Rich Media, and it'll tell you exactly where it is. So we're going to go ahead and open that that way by going up to View and going to Tools. And I see all the various tools that match the right-hand column. I'm going to go down to Rich Media and just click Rich Media. And now I have my Rich Media selection options across the top. I can add a 3D figure. We're not going to do that today. I can add a button. I can add a sound, a shockwave file, a video, or I can select an object. Now, some of you may be tempted to click Add Sound. And I'm going to recommend not to do that, and here's why. The Add Button feature offers more functionality, and it gives you the same exact effect. Uh, add Sound is just one subset of Add Button. So we're going to go ahead and click Add Button, and this is going to give me some crosshairs. And I'm going to draw a button over Weird Al's face. And we draw it over his face, and that's a beautiful looking button. And I'm going to call this button Tacky. I hit Enter, I change the name, and there's Tacky. Now I can click all properties here, but let's say you accidentally click off. Oh no, we can't see Weird Al anymore. And we haven't done anything but it's very simple. All you do is just double click and your button properties comes up. You have five tabs across the top. We're going to focus on two of those. We're going to focus on appearance, and we're going to focus on actions. Let's look at appearance first. You can't see Weird Al's face. Well, that's because my button is filled in. I want it to be transparent. Uh, up here under border color, uh, not border collie, border color, excuse me, I have uh, transparent. That's this little scuba symbol, a little white flag with a red stripe across it. That means that there's nothing there. Um, so if I click on fill color, I can then, you know, change the colors to a beautiful purple or, or whatever I want. But really what I want to do is go down here to this checkbox and I want to select transparent. And once that box is highlighted, I can go ahead and X out of colors. And now we see the beautiful face of Weird Al again, which is truly pleasing. Um, now I see that both my border color and my fill color are transparent. Now you may be saying, but Bob, if you remember that my name's Bob, there's a little blue border around there. Uh, or isn't the user going to see that and the word tacky in the middle? No. Those are only there whenever you're selecting it. So because it's highlighted right now on your screen, you're going to see it, but the user won't. So go over here to Actions. <coughs> Excuse me, on the far right. I'm going to click Actions, and now I can select my triggers and select my actions. All right. Now I have to explain what triggers are to you real quick. When I click on Triggers, you see that there are six possible triggers that you can use. I'm only going to discuss the first four. Because uh, on focus and on blur doesn't really work to the point where we're going to use it in a classroom set. <coughs> you have four different trigger options. You have mouse up, mouse down, mouse enter, mouse exit. Let me explain. They're very simple. Okay. Mouse up and mouse down have to do with the mouse button. Okay, the trigger button. When I click on a button, okay, you might be able to hear it. That is mouse down. When I let go, that's mouse up. Pretty simple, right? So I can create functionality in my PDF if somebody clicks something or mouse downs. It can do some type of an action. And then if I really wanted to 
mess with the user, uh, and it, or should I say increase a lot of functionality, then I can also have a different action performed when you mouse up. Uh, some people whose bosses told them they must make PDFs may have had certain areas when they mouse down, moo like a cow, and when they mouse up, clucked like a chicken. Truly very entertaining. But we're not going to focus on that because I, I don't really want my PDF to be uh, to where the user has to click something in order for it to happen. I just want them to be surprised. So instead, I'm going to focus on the second set, mouse enter and mouse exit. What mouse enter means is that we have this bounding box for the button. On the PDF, they won't say the box. They won't even know the button's there. But if they happen to mouse over or enter the boundaries of this button, some action will perform. Uh, and then another action can perform when I exit the boundary. So I want mouse enter because I want them, if they mouse over their face, I want it to be able to play a quick snippet, 10 seconds of the tacky sound. So now I'm going to select action. I have a lot of actions that I can do. Let me just point out a couple to you really quick. Uh, you can have it open a file. This is very helpful if down in the bottom corner of your PDF, you can have do you want more information? Click here. And they click that and it opens up an Excel document or your source documentation or something to that effect. It's not in the infographic or in the PDF at the very beginning, but if they click because the user wants more information, it's available to them. Another great option is open a web link. That can be on a PDF down at the bottom right is your name or, or your contact information. But if they click it, it opens up your website, directing them automatically to there. What we're going to focus on is place it. Uh, well, excuse me, let me go back really quick. Open a web link also works for opening YouTube videos. Um, if I'm making a PDF that simply explains some um, uh, chemical reduction oxidation reaction uh, for my students, if they click the more info option, it can bring up a nice 10 minute, 15 minute YouTube video that really goes into redox equations and how they work. Uh, but, but again, that's a great functionality to add in. But what we're going to do is we're going to play a sound. We're not going to make it moo or cluck. Um, Weird Al does enough mooing and clucking for all of us. So uh, we're just going to have it when the mouse enters the boundaries of the box, it's going to play a sound. And the sound that I'm going to add is going to be this tacky wave file. You see that I have a .m4a, that was the format for my iPhone, remember, and it will not let me select it because it's not an option. So instead, well see now I messed everything up, close it, reopen. Uh, instead what I'm going to do is it already went ahead and set this action. So I'm going to edit this and I'm going to make sure that I want to open the tacky.wav file and hit select. And now it's done. So I can go ahead and close this out. And now I have my PDF. It's done. Now I'm looking at this with Acrobat Pro. Realize that most of your users are going to be using Acrobat Reader so they aren't going to have all this functionality. How can you test this? How can you make sure that it worked? Well, let me make sure my volume's up. Down here at the bottom right, I have the arrow feature selected. This lets me go ahead and select images and tools and do, but if you switch it over to the hand, you notice a couple things. My icon has changed to a hand and it's switched over to uh, where you no longer see the button. If I mouse over, most beautiful song in the world. Now, I want to point out something. When I mouse over, it plays the song Tacky, the 10 second snippet. But watch as I mouse over and then leave. It's still playing the song because I didn't tell any to do anything when I mouse exit. So how do we fix that? So I apologize, I had a little bit of a hiccup while recording, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, continue on rather than redo this. Um, so our challenge that we were having is that it would the, the tacky file, the sound file would play, but it wouldn't stop. So let me show you how to fix that. Click on select object, double click on tacky. We'll go ahead and delete that because that hasn't happened yet. And it's gonna play the tacky 10 second snippet when I mouse over, but when I mouse exit, I want it to play something else. This time, what I want it to play is a file called silence. And what is silence? I simply use my voice recorder, my voice memo button on my iPhone, and did a quick tap and recorded one second of silence, converted it over to a WAV format, and now I have it. So now what's happening is that when we enter the bounding box, it's gonna play tacky, but when we exit, it's not stopping tacky, it's actually 
playing the silent wave file. Uh, that's a very important distinction. It, it, the functionality I've discovered so far, you cannot have a, a mouse exit feature stop a sound file from playing. You're going to have to create another sound file. Now, there's two things. One, this isn't that big of a deal. It's a Gucci tactic if you just want your PDF to be really, really, really high speed. Um, the second thing is that if you don't have a phone that can record audio, that's fine. Just Google up silence.wav and you'll find plenty of silence.wav files that are out there available for you to uh, download. Right. Um, so really, that's it. Uh, we now have a, a button that plays audio when I highlight over it, stops, and uh, you just keep duplicating that for however many faces or buttons or objects that you have on your video. Hope that you found this helpful. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Uh, if you would like me to do a different video or there's some other functionality about any of these Adobe products that you don't understand, I have no problems learning that for you really quick and then uh, recording a quick video and sticking it out there on YouTube. So hope you found this helpful and uh, take care. Thanks. Bye.